The Fardier Cugno was the world's first self-propelled steam engine and also one of the earliest to use high-pressure steam. It was, however, marred in the intrigues of the French court of Louis XV. Nicolas-Joseph Cugnot was a French engineer officer who was born in Lorraine in 1725. In 1748, he engaged as an officer for 15 years in the Austrian army. He also served on the staff of the famous general, Maréchal Maurice de Saxe, during which time Cugnot devised a form of muzzle-loading rifle. Whilst serving in the Austrian army, he was under the orders of the famous French officer, General Jean-Baptiste Griboval, who would later come to much prominence in Cugnot's career. During a brief spell of service in Belgium, Cugnot had the idea of a steam-powered carriage to pull heavy artillery pieces. He left the Austrian army in 1763 and returned to France, where he started to develop his idea for steam carriages further. In addition, he wrote three well-respected treaties on artillery and fortification. And there, Cugnot's steam tractor may have remained had he not found influential sponsors in the French army and at the French court. These were General Jean-Baptiste Griboval, by now the Inspector General of French Artillery, and the Duc de Choiseul, the Minister of War and the First Minister of France. Thereafter, Cugnot's fate and that of his fardier would be linked to the success of these two great men of state. In Paris, Cugnot and his experiments came to the attention of General Gribeval, Inspector General of French Artillery, who was then in the process of reorganising and rearming the French army. And this had not necessarily made him a popular man amongst traditional-minded artillery officers or amongst those at the French court. Griboval gave Cugnot his full backing in his project for a steam wagon to pull heavy artillery. At the same time, the French Minister of War, the Duc de Choiseul, drew Griboval's attention to the work of a Swiss army officer named De Planter, who was working on a similar idea. De Planter arrived in Paris to inspect Cugnot's design, and he reported favourably to Griboval on Cugnot's design. Cugnot was then given authorization and funding to build a quarter-scale model of his proposed fardier à vapeur. The whole design and build process was absolutely top secret. This scale model was demonstrated on the 23rd of October 1769 at the Château de Vincennes in Paris. It was capable of moving at a speed of 1.1 kilometers per hour, but had to stop every 15 minutes for the boiler refilling with water. A second demonstration was made on the 1st of December 1769 before General Ribeval and the Duc de Choiseul. Success of this trial resulted in permission being granted by the French state to build a full-size version. This full-size fardier à vapeur was first demonstrated on the 20th of November 1770, having cost 22,000 francs to build, and it was, of course, a state secret. The fardier à vapeur consisted at the rear of a standard French army affût fardier, or sling carriage, a heavy carriage used for transporting the gun barrels of heavy siege artillery pieces. Coupled to it at the front, in lieu of the horses and limber, was in effect a self-propelled unicycle. The fardier vapeur was driven by a single steerable wheel at the front. Steam was generated by a globular copper boiler, and working pressure is quoted as either two atmospheres or four atmospheres, so somewhere between 30 to 60-ish pounds per square inch. To drive this wheel were two vertical cast bronze cylinders. Steam was distributed via four-way cock and the cylinders were only single acting, so that steam was admitted on the downward stroke only, as this was thought to help stability and adhesion. Exhaust steam vented directly to the atmosphere. The steam engine was also capable of being reversed to provide forward and backward movement of the fardier. The drive was through a ratchet and pull mechanism, and each power stroke revolved the wheel one quarter turn, and at the same time returned the piston of the opposite cylinder to the top of its stroke. 
carrying a load of five tons consisting of the gun barrel from a 48 pounder siege gun and four passengers. The full size Fardier was able to move at a sprightly speed of 5.6 kilometers per hour. Due to the problems with the boiler feed pump, however, it had to be stopped after an hour's operation for the boiler to be refilled. Despite the oft quoted story of how the Fardier vapeur ran out of control in interval war, this incident is not recorded in any of the technical reports of the time, so it is unlikely to be true. However, clearly the Fardier vapeur needed more work, but further development of the promising new technology would be cut short by intrigue at the highest levels of the French state. Cugnot was working at a period of time in France where to get anywhere one had to be an aristocrat and had to have influential support in the French court. Cugnot was also working at a period of reform in France. The king's chief mistress or maîtresse en tête, the Madame de Pompardeur, had supported politicians like the Duc de Choiseul who were liberal and reform-minded. However, after her death and replacement as the king's uh, matras en tête by the Madame du Barry, who believed in an absolute monarchy, any ideas of reform were dismissed. In 1771, Bertha Choiseul and General Grébeauval lost their positions, and thus Cugnot lost his crucial supporters and patrons at court. Work on his Fardier à Vapeur was put on hold indefinitely in July 1771. Cugnot's engine, however, was not scrapped and it was stored at the Vincennes arsenal. As a reward for his invention, however, in 1774, Cugnot was granted an annual pension of 600 livres, but this came to an end in 1789, following the fall of the Bourbon monarchy. Thereafter, Cugnot went into self-imposed exile in Belgium, where he lived in relative poverty, but this didn't stop him from writing further treaties on artillery and siege warfare. Some interest was shown in the Fardier à Vapeur in 1779, which it wasn't taken seriously until a young General Napoleon Bonaparte appeared, and in 1798, he requested the Fardier Vapeur taking out of the arsenal at Vincennes and being given further trials as a means of better hauling heavy siege artillery. Napoleon also drew attention to the Institut de France of Cugnot's Fardier, but nothing seems to have happened to further Cugnot's design. In 1800, it was placed in care of the Conservatoire des Arts et Métiers in Paris where it went on public display in 1801, and indeed it is still on public display. Cugnot returned to Paris in 1800, and Napoleon granted Cugnot a pension of a thousand francs a year for the rest of his life. He died in Paris in 1804. A half-size working replica was built in 1988 by the Lycée Cugnot, and a full-size version was built in France in 2010. Cugnot's Fardier Vapeur was a machine well ahead of its time, and had it not been for the political intrigues of the Ancien Régime Bourbon monarchy, it could have been developed further into a more efficient and effective machine. I hope you have enjoyed this video on the Fardier à Vapeur, and if you have, please leave a comment below. Please also like, share and subscribe. If you would like to support Rail Story and this channel, you can also do so via Ko-fi, where you can buy me a coffee, and on Patreon. And I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. And see you all next time on Rail Story.